Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Going to begin with verse... <clears throat> going to be begin with verse uh, 75 Luke chapter 1 begin with verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Again, Luke 1 and 80, And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Title of the message, Prepared in the Hard Place. There are some, there are a few, there's a remnant, there are those right now that are being prepared by God in the hard place. You wonder, Lord, why has it been so difficult? Why has it been so hard? I've always thought that the greater the task, the greater the preparation. John was prepared in the desert. The desert speaks to us of a dry place. Dry. Speaks to us of a place where the heat of the sun beating down. Amen? During the day. But freezing cold at night. Scripture says that John ate wild, ate locusts and wild honey. Now you may think that's talking about some kind of a food, locusts, but they're even talking now around the world that locusts are edible and that they are a delicacy in some places. Are you listening? John did not eat regular food like everybody else. Why was he eating locusts? There must be something about the locusts that we hadn't known up till now, that people are just now starting to eat locusts more and more. What is it about the locusts, other than the fact that all through Scripture the locust is mentioned as the enemy? God says, John, I want you to eat the enemy. I'm going to train you. He was filled with the Holy Ghost from birth. There's some things, folks, that God will have you do that He won't have others do. He'll make you to abstain from some things that others don't have to abstain from. He'll make you go through some things that you, others won't need to go through. Why? Because He's killing that flesh. He's not so in concern. The Lord's not con so concerned about the comfort of your flesh. The scripture says, John waxed strong in the spirit. We see in the Old Testament scriptures 
when God gave them their desire that they grew fat in the flesh, but they were lean in their souls. They were lean in the spirit. We need to be fat, amen, in the spirit. We need to be fat in our souls, folks. We need to be growing in the Lord. Isn't that what it says? The child grew and waxed strong in the spirit. He was in the deserts till the day of the showing, until he, until he was to be revealed to Israel. That doesn't mean that John left the desert and went into Jerusalem off and on. Are you listening? Doesn't mean that he got a break from the desert. When people saw John, they saw a man that was dressed different than everybody else was dressed. Are you listening? His clothing was camel's hair. When they saw this man, they probably thought, this is a wild man. There's something strange about this one. They say that when, when Jonah came out of the belly of the whale, the people thought he was Dagon, and that's why they listened. Well, I do think there was something very strange looking about Jonah. Not only did he smell like a fish, but he probably had seaweed all over him. We don't know altogether, but the... We do know the scripture says that the whale spit Jonah out upon the land. So I wonder how many people saw Jonah being spit out. No wonder they listened. Maybe they did think he was Dagon. It doesn't really matter who they thought he was. What matters is they listened. Amen. They listened to the message. They obeyed the message. God's not so concerned what you look like altogether. He's more concerned of what you're saying. I think in the church we got more caught up in what we look like than what we sound like. You can look the part and have a wrong spirit. And people are not going to be drawn to the Lord. They're going to run. They won't even come to the Lord. They won't even come to you. They won't even want to be around you. Amen. But there's a sweetness to the gospel. The only ones that came to John's, Baptist, uh, John's uh, baptism that were there for the wrong reason with the bitter spirit and angry with the Pharisees, the tax collectors, and they were out there for the wrong reason. They weren't there for the same reason the other people were there. You're always going to have enemies. You're always going to have those that are going to come for the wrong motive. But you've got to have the wisdom of God to deal with them. And I don't think that John was leaning to his own understanding when he spoke to the Pharisees, when he spoke to the tax collectors. I believe that God spoke through John prophetically spoke right into their hearts, spoke right into them, told them what they were doing wrong, told them what they needed to do. Amen? John didn't have some kind of po politically correct message. More and more preachers today are getting more and more politically correct. They asked Joel Osteen, which I don't even think he's even saved, never mind a preacher. Never mind a pastor. I think his dad would be ashamed of him today. I really do. I don't think his dad would be happy with him. He didn't even stick with the scriptures. He even said on national TV that his dad was, that this is many years past the time of his dad and we got to catch up with the times. We got to get with the times. But Joel Osteen preaches a message or teaches a message that is politically correct. Fit in with the agenda. You don't want to offend anybody, Joel. You don't want to offend any homosexuals. 
There's even homosexuals that sit in his services. My dumb father-in-law listens to that idiot. I feel badly for anybody that listens to Joel Osteen. And there's several others out there. Humanism. Listen, Joel Osteen is nothing more than a motivational speaker. That's what he is. There's nothing spiritual about what he does. He's a motivational speaker. Which is the reason why my father-in-law enjoys listening to him because my father-in-law always has enjoyed motivational speakers. In fact, he was a very big fan of, Gail, uh, of Carnegie. Folks, motivational speaking is not going to get us to turn to Jesus. We don't need to hear positive speaking. We need the truth. What did John say to those that were coming out to his baptism? What did he say to the Pharisees? What did he say to the religious of his day? What did he say to the political? What did he say to the tax collectors? Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Who told you to come out here? They didn't want to realize the truth that these people that were being baptized were fleeing the wrath of God. John was preaching repentance. He was preaching salvation. He was telling the people that Jesus was coming. He was preparing them for the Christ. He was preparing them for the Savior of the world. He was preparing them for salvation. And he said, you must be baptized unto repentance. Listen to what it says in Luke chapter 1, verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation. Is that what we're hearing today? Preachers giving knowledge of salvation? When's the last time you heard Joel Osteen talk about salvation? When's the last time you heard anybody that's of the same spirit as Joel Osteen? When's the last time you heard anybody talking... When's the last time you heard Benny Hinn talking about salvation? Knowledge of salvation. Folks, there's a lot of counterfeits out there. There's a lot of deceivers in the land. A lot of false prophets. That voice of the one crying in the wilderness is still the same voice. His voice hasn't changed. It's not John the Baptist's voice. It's the Lord God Almighty. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, that's not my words. God the Father was speaking through the Son. God is still speaking in this hour. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Spirit is speaking. The voice of the turtle dove is still in the land. But there's very few that have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, folks. The turtle dove is leaving the land. The voice of the turtle dove is leaving. What's the turtle dove? Turtle dove is a dove. It's a type. Just like they try to say and the charismatics are saying today that it literally a dove came down and landed upon Jesus' shoulder. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The Holy Ghost came down and lighted upon Jesus like a dove. The characteristics of a dove. That the Holy Spirit is gentle. What is it? What else about a dove is a type? Did you know that doves are very timid? That doesn't mean that God is timid, that the Holy Ghost is timid. That means you can easily grieve the Holy Spirit. Very sensitive. You can offend the Holy Ghost. You don't want to, but you can do it. That's the only sin 
that cannot be forgiven is to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Speak against the Holy Ghost. You can speak against the Father and the Son and be forgiven, but you cannot speak against the Holy Ghost. These pictures today in, in the midst of uh, Christodom with doves. Beware. Holy Ghost is not a dove. and the, the Holy Ghost did not come down through a dove. Just because Noah sent a dove out of the ark. These are all types. Amen? Holy Ghost is the one that shakes the earth. Yeah. Yeah. He shakes the earth terribly. He's the one that shows up and shakes places. And prison doors are open. Hallelujah. Power shall be endued with power from on high. Nobody dared to touch John. They didn't dare to touch him. Anointed of the Holy Ghost. We must understand, folks. There is a real, there is a genuine. And there is a false. There is a fraud. There is a counterfeit. There is a voice in the land. But the scripture says, No longer shall the voice of the bride and the bridegroom, the turtle dove, be heard in the land. There's coming an hour, friends, when God is going to just remove, depart from this earth. And the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be enjoyable on this earth when the devil's in control fully at charge look God up to this point has allowed the devil to manifest as the serpent very subtle where he can twist himself around people and suck the and, and just get the life out of them but in these last days he's going to allow the devil to manifest as the dragon as a red dragon This is talking about the Antichrist kingdom. Now, you see that under the dragon right now in China, what's going on? The communism in China. Red China. This red dragon, without question, is communism, dictatorship over the whole world. But it won't be someone from China. It won't be someone from Russia. It's going to be this Maitreya. The Antichrist. It's going to be a mystical Christ. The world's going to wonder after him. Folks, that's what the world wants. They want this Maitreya. They want this mystical entity that can change to a grotesque individual anytime at will. But then he transforms himself into an angel of light anytime he wants to. Sound familiar? The difference is, is back in John's day, there was only one person, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. But in these last days, God's got more than one. More than one individual that's willing to let his voice be heard in the land. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God glory. Give Him all the praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. Jesus said there had never been a greater than John the Baptist. That's what He said about John. Never had been greater than John the Baptist. But what did he say after that? But you that are least shall be greater than he. 
That word least means to come to nothing. Amen? Even John was not walking in the fullness. Are you willing to be a zero? Are you willing to be a zero for Jesus? They're saying right now, worldwide, this is what they're teaching, that the power of zero, that's the new thing right now, the power of zero, something out of nothing. That's what the big trend, the big teaching is right now, that you can never be something until you come to zero. The power of zero. Can we understand that as believers in Christ that we must decrease and he must increase? We must become of no reputation. We are the forerunners for him, not for ourselves. We're heralding his coming. And I see John heralding the first coming of Jesus for salvation, but I see the overcomer heralding the message that not only is the Lord coming, but his wrath is coming. And I believe the overcomer is going to forerun and, and let the world know that the wrath of God is coming. But even John did say, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So he, even he dealed with God's wrath. But I believe John was dealing with, with this in part. I believe John was prophesying in part. The scripture doesn't say that John was walking in the fullness. Amen? Even John said, make sure it's him. Go back and see, make sure it's him. We don't know if altogether John had doubts or if he just wanted to make sh doubly sure that those that he was going to leave behind, that they would be following the right one. John cared about his disciples. He didn't want them following a, a false prophet, false teacher. He didn't come all that way to prepare those disciples to leave them in the hands of a, of, a, of a deceiver. He wanted to make sure this was the one. But think about it, folks. This is John stood there and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But you must understand... That John was still just a man. The voice that spoke through John that said, Behold the Lamb of God. That wasn't John's voice. John saw the Spirit descending upon Jesus as a dove. Lighting upon him. But that wasn't just John's voice altogether. John was in agreement and allowed God to speak through him, but John was in full agreement. Yes, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one that I told you of. This is the one I told you that would baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But Then we see John in that place where he was about to have his head cut off, and he sent his disciples, make sure it's really him. That does not sound like to me that that's the fullness. But in these last days, God has promised fullness. The measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He was in the desert in the hard place, in the dry place, into the time of his showing. All creation is groaning and travailing for that which shall be revealed in the last time, the manifestation, the unveiling of the sons of God. What is that earthquake? What is that tsunami? What is that tornado? What is these things that are going on? What's that volcano? Why is the earth travailing? What's going on? What's the convulsions all about? The earth, the Bible says, all creation is groaning. 
Why are the fish dying? Why are these things happening all over the world? Because the sons of God are about to be revealed upon the earth. God is about to move by His Spirit. There's going to be a manifestation of the glory of God. The Lord is about to move. There's about to be a demonstration beyond the demonstrations of the days of old. God is going to move by His Spirit. There's going to be a manifestation of the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You haven't seen them yet because they're in the place of preparation. They're being prepared. They're being readied. They're being trained by the Holy Ghost. Even Paul the Apostle was prepared, was trained. After his experience he had on the road of Damascus, the Bible says Paul gave his testimony that he went to Arabia. He was trained by the Holy Ghost. He was prepared by the Holy Ghost. When Paul came into his ministry, he was different than all the other apostles in that God worked with John, uh, worked with Paul one on one in a way that was very different than the others. Amen. God's working, preparing, training a few. Not the proud and not the marines. The meek, the lowly, an army, an army more fierce than any army on the planet. Amen? Perfect love casteth out fear. Flames of fire. Amen. You could see a glimpse of that if you read the book of Joel. Read the book of Joel and see the army God's raising up. They shall not break rank. They shall not thrust against one another. The earth is going to tremble before them. Amen. Hallelujah. When these begin to march, even the earth will tremble. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. There's going to be a manifestation of God's power through His sons. You know why? Simple obedience. Simple obedience. But it's not so simple in the sense that you've got to get into a place where you can obey God. So there's some training. There's some preparing. Amen? There's a, there's a training process that God puts us through where He fine-tunes us, where He gets us ready. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His wife hath made herself ready. She prepared herself. She got ready. Hallelujah. She only did what the Holy Ghost told her to do. She only received what the Holy Ghost provided her. Doesn't that sound a lot like Esther? Before she went in unto the king. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I praise you, Lord. All creation's groaning, travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. There is a remnant that has not been revealed that is in the church but is not the church has yet to be revealed. All faces shall gather blackness. 
Before them will be a, as a garden of Eden, and after them a desolate wilderness. What does that mean? That means where people think that they've got the best. When these pass through the land, they'll see something that is out of this world. And they're going to think, wow, I thought I had the riches. I thought we had the power. No, you don't have the riches and you don't have the power. God's sons have their inheritance and they're walking in their inheritance and they are rich in mercy. They are rich in the power of God. Amen? Raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, praise the living God, not afraid of man, not afraid of uh, weapons of mass destruction, not afraid of the threats of man, walking in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, uh, walking in the anointing, hallelujah. I'll leave you with that thought.